Now, since I've started testing a lot of different systems on the channel, something has become a little bit of a problem, and that's moving my games libraries around. Usually, I will have this little hard drive here. It's an old thing from Gigabyte, a SATA SSD on a cable that I plug into different systems, but having so many set up and trying to get everything running at the same time and benchmarking things and testing things, it's become a little bit of an issue, so much so that I generally just tend to get the machines to re-download all the games again. And of course, that is a problem because it takes so much time to do. But a few of you clever people out there suggested that I pick myself up a USB drive, just like this one here, and see if we can use that instead to move games libraries around and things. Now, I believe that this will work, but will it actually affect the performance of my tests? Well, that's what we're gonna find out today. As you guys are aware, there are multiple ways of actually storing your games. The first one is probably the cheapest, the hard drive, mechanical hard drive. Not many people actually use these nowadays, but we used to use them all the time and they're still viable if you want to store files or particularly play games. Then of course, we've got the SATA SSD, probably the most commonly used nowadays because it gives you SATA type or SSD type speeds, but they are relatively cheap and easy to install into a system. And then for most people, what you will be aiming towards or looking for is probably one of these, the NVMe drive. Now, most people will be running their operating systems off of these. And if you are building a brand new system, this is definitely the uh, kind of item that you want to do your storage and stuff because they can get super fast. They go all the way up to PCIe Gen 5 now, which have got some incredible speeds. But the one that we're going to be actually using today to test our USB theory is this one here. This was sent to us by Integral for testing out this video and doing this kind of experiment. It is an Integral Slim Express Pro portable SSD. It does come with either USB-A or USB-C with Gen 3.2 connectivity. It was much smaller than I thought it was going to be and this is a two terabyte drive so it kind of suits us perfectly fine here and of course I want to thank Integral for sending this across if it does work and it works fine in terms of performance testing of course we're going to start using this going forward and I'll probably get a couple of others to copy over all of our games to so I can get multiple systems running at the same time to put this into perspective of how fast this USB drive is in comparison to the others when looking at the drives, read and write speeds in megabytes per second, a typical mechanical hard drive will be around 140 megabytes a second with 130 megabytes per second on the write speed. A typical SATA SSD, in our case, the Western Digital Blue, one terabyte, will have a read speed of around 560 with a write speed of 530. The USB-C drive from Integral has around 2000 megabytes per second on the read speed with a 2000 megabytes per second on the write. And then for the Gen 3 NVMe, you're looking at around 3,500 megabytes per second for the read speed and 3,300 megabytes for the write speed. That, of course, puts it kind of smack bang in between the uh, SATA SSD and the NVMe drive, but it will depend on which NVMe drive you've got. These actually range from very slow to extremely fast. Some of the Gen 5 NVMEs coming out now will go all the way up to 14,000 megabits per second read write. So it all depends on exactly what you're doing. Now, the one that we're going to compare it with today is the one that we typically use in our benching system, which is this one here, which is a Viper Gaming VP4300. It is a PCI Gen 4. NVMe drive but the motherboard only supports PCI Gen 3 in the slot that we use it so we are going to get the maximum or up to the maximum speeds of a Gen 3 drive and that's what we're going to actually be comparing it against. Now we do have our benching rig all set up and for the graphics card on these tests today I have installed our AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT. No actual reason for doing that really I just saw it on the shelf and wondered what kind of graphics card I was going to use for this video and I thought I haven't used it in a while so why not give it a go. It'll at least give us a picture of what kind of super modern games look like on a 5700 XT so that's the one that we're going to go for. Now of course I've removed the NVMe drive this is a two terabyte drive from the system so there are no games on this system at the moment particularly on our Steam account and we are going to be using Steam because it's easier to move games across. I do try to get all of my benchmarking games on Steam just because of how easy it is to log in and how it saves progress and stuff like that but of course we need to plug in our USB drive. Now this is the USB drive itself. Like I say, it was much smaller than I thought it was going to be. Looking at the pictures on their Amazon and things like that, it looked like it was going to be about the size of a SATA SSD, but it isn't. It's actually quite small. I assume there's just an NVMe drive in there, to be honest. But of course, it connects here with the USB-C and it goes to a USB-C connection on the end. 
It does come with an adapter, like I said before, so you can switch it to a USB-A 3.2 Gen, so you'll get similar speeds anyway. But all we need to do is, of course, plug it into the machine. Now with the drive plugged into the system, we just need to pop over to our Steam installation, make sure that it's actually picked it up. So we'll go over to our Steam settings, go to our storage, as we can see, it hasn't actually picked anything up yet. It normally does pick it up quite automatically, or it has done in the past, but we'll add the drive anyway. We'll go over to our choose other location, pop over to our E drive. So it's appeared as an E drive. Maybe that's why it hasn't picked it up straight away, but we'll go in there and that has now picked that up and we'll save those settings. Popping over to our library, we can see that all of our games that we normally test on the NVMe drive have been picked up here. And I think the first test that we're going to do is probably take a look at something like Doom Eternal. It's relatively easy to play, no issue for the RX 5700 XT to play, but we'll at least see if we get any kind of problems in game. Now while the game is loading up, it is important for me to say that I'm not too interested in loading times at the moment. Loading time is just a game of patience, and I have a lot of patience, particularly when I've got multiple machines being tested at the same time i can leave one test another that kind of thing so what i'm more interested in really is is there any kind of performance difference in between using my standard nvme drive and having to reinstall games over and over again or the usb drive that i can switch between machines very quickly that's actually going to be detrimental to of course performance testing so that's the thing that we're really looking at but we'll head over into game now that it's loaded up takes a few minutes to connect to the Bethesda.net, but we'll pop over to our settings before we go into game. We'll see what we've got configured. We are going to currently run this game in a 1440p resolution. And for Doom Eternal, we've actually set it to an ultra setting. Again, that is more than enough for this card, or at least the card is more than enough for that kind of setting. So let's head into game and see what kind of performance we get and see if we get any kind of issues. Is there any kind of stuttering and things like that? So I've loaded the game up in a regular place where I start my testing from normally. It is a pretty early on in the game, so it's not very demanding, but it does give uh, graphics cards a good little test to at least warm things up before proper testing starts. And everything seems to be running very smoothly at the moment. We're currently getting an average of 175 frames per second with a 1% low of 140. Very typical uh, kind of performance here for this graphics card and this game. Everything looks wonderful. There is no stuttering. Our frame time graph is actually looking pretty low here with a five millisecond kind of response time. So there's no major issues going on. But then again, there's not a lot going on on the screen either. So let's jump down into a bit of a fight and get some more things working on screen. So far, everything is still running absolutely smoothly. No dips in our 1% lows. There's nothing happening with our average frame rates. We have dropped slightly now that we have gone into... Uh, more of things going on on the screen but that is expected and apart from that I think everything is starting to look very good the game is still running extremely smooth I don't think there's absolutely any issues here but of course just testing a single game on the USB stick only proves that you can run a game from a USB stick what we really need to do is some comparative based testing and for that, we're going to use a bunch of different games. Now, the games we're going to do for some performance comparative testing are games that are from our normal test suite. It completely makes sense considering that we're thinking about swapping this device over. So I'm going to go away and test those games and then we'll see what kind of difference it makes.
Okay, so I've tested around six games. Five of them are from our normal test suite. One of them is a brand new game that I managed to download the benchmark of, and that is a Black Myth. I am thinking about picking that game up and adding it to our normal test suite. Obviously, I can't use the built-in benchmark because I do all in-game testing to make sure it's as accurate as possible, but I might purchase that one. I'm not really too keen on actually playing it. I haven't really hasn't really kind of sold itself to me but for benchmarking if you guys want me to do that let me know in the comments below and i'll pick that game up and add it to our normal test suite and to be honest overall the testing that we did the results are pretty interesting to be fair when it came to the average fps performance there was very little between the nvme drive and the usb c drive black myth getting an average of 53 frames per second with the on both the usb and nvme cyberpunk 2077 getting the same again and we pretty much see this picture all the way through the games until we get to uh, Space Marine 2 where we saw one less frame per second that we did on the USB-C drive to the NVMe. But that is of course with intolerance here so they are pretty much exactly the same. When it comes to the uh, average 1% lows I did expect there to be a bigger difference here but to be honest there wasn't and there was some kind of surprising elements too. For most of the games they were pretty much neck and neck with Cyberpunk 2077 falling behind by about 2 frames per second again still with intolerance so it didn't really make that much difference but then when we look at games like Horizon Forbidden West running from the USB-C drive we actually saw a 5 FPS increase on the 1% lows that was quite interesting to see but again because tests are difficult to replicate without built-in benchmarks it could have just been that that caused it but overall there is absolutely no difference between running the NVMe drive in our system and the integral USB-C drive we saw exactly the same results across so it's kind of safe and confident to say that uh, USB drives nowadays are just fast enough to perform as game storage and running drives I've never actually tested this before because I've just really just reinstalled everything like this and back in the day USB drives were not that fast at all but clearly there has been some improvement there and I'm pretty impressed with that I'm definitely going to go pick up a number of these as well probably have two or three of them in the studio and i will be able to now just swap games in between things adapt it to older systems using usb maybe there is an effect when you uh, play it on an older system but for most of you out there you'll probably be using a newer system this is of course useful for people like me who do swap games libraries between systems but it's also useful for a lot of others out there particularly those that build with budget motherboards there is a lot of motherboards out there that people will be picking up like the a620 series from amd where you only have a single nvme slot now if it is down to upgrading that of course you've got to reinstall the operating system and stuff like that or you need to plug in a sata ssd either way you're gonna to have to tear your machine down plug wiring in make sure you've got enough power connections on your power supply things like that and a lot of people are not comfortable on doing that so this would also suit people that have very budget level boards and they want to expand their storage without affecting any kind of performance just simply just go pick up one of these plug it into the system you can even plug it in around the back so you'll never see it and you'll be able to play all of your games perfectly fine off of it. You just point your uh, launcher to it as a library and you are good to go. But anyway, that brings us to the end of our testing. I hope you guys have uh, learned something. I've definitely learned something that it doesn't affect the performance. And I'm definitely going to be using this going forward. And I'm sure as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.